all of, all of humanity always seems to be restless. As soon as people got the opportunity, they headed from Europe over to North and South America. And once they got to North America, they didn't stop at the East Coast. They kept spreading and spreading and spreading until they hit the West Coast. Seems like people have the itch. And it's just, well, restlessness. We do that all the time. Uh, I'll be honest with you. You know, I've been at this for, what, 40 years, this pastor thing? And, and sometimes I go, what new can I tell them? And the answer I always come up with is, nothing. Because in our restlessness, we need something soothing. We need something to just sit back and say, ah. And what that something is, is God's Word. What that is, is God Himself. Because God never changes. You know, one of the things with with the ancient religions, and you still see it in, uh, well, I'll, I'll say the, the pagan religions. God is fickle. You look at the, the Roman gods, which a lot of them come from the Greeks, so the Greek gods, and there's just <clears throat> no way of knowing how to appease that God. And, and you bring it to, to the religions that were... In, in the Americas, and you know, God, God is fickle. We need to appease Him, so if we need rain, we need to do a rain dance. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. And the question was always then, well, what do we have to do to appease God? Because God seems to like this today, but tomorrow... He won't. And it got to the point where people were offering human sacrifices. Because, well, that seemed, at least most of the time, to appease God. See, this restlessness we have is born not because of the need to you know, go west, young man. But the restlessness comes from, from not having straight in ourselves the spiritual aspect. And, and I'm not talking about moving to a new house or you know, something like that. But you take a, a look at what people are, are doing around us. And, and even within ourselves. And what we see is this restlessness that I need something. So, maybe if I get enough money or maybe if I, I, I start eating certain foods or, or maybe if I do and the list can go on and on. It'll cure this restlessness. And maybe that means I need to look for, for a new house. Or, or maybe I, I need to look for, well, whatever. The extreme cases, well, at least I haven't heard of any in Tampa lately, um, the extreme case of needing to sacrifice a human. But we sacrifice ourselves. The abuse of, of, of anything whether it's drugs, alcohol, food, um, no, re relationships, what, whatever. It's because of this restlessness 
that exists because something's just not right. The woman who had the flow of blood for 12 years, she reached out and, and she touched the, the hem of Jesus' garment. And it says she knew she was cured. We know what this restlessness is. But how often do we, do we think about the cure? I've mentioned before, and I'll probably say it, I don't know, 300 times in the next year. But one of the reasons that I like the liturgy is that it brings us back. And that why we gather is that we're here to be nourished by God. Through his word, through his sacrament, we're here to be nourished by him. Yeah, in that process, we also you know, praise and give thanks to Him. But the main focus is being nourished by Him. And liturgy basically comes straight from Scripture. You know, for the very, very vast portion of it, it's quoting Scripture. This is where we come back. It's only in the power of what Jesus has done. Because of God's compassion. Boy, be glad I'm not God. Because when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, I probably would have said, fine, have it your own way, and walk away. You know, God has done that in the past. except for the part of, of walking away and saying, fine, have it your own way. But when people pestered God, God gave in to them. Think about it. Israel wanted a king, a human king. And the argument went something like this. Hey God, we want a king. And God says, you have a king. It's me. And they said, no, 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 we want a human king. And God says, why do you need a human king? Because everybody else is doing it. No, no, you don't want a human king. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you do do that and he's going to start collecting taxes from you. He's going to start drafting your young men into the military. There are all kinds of things that go along with that. And they said, that's okay. And God says, but, but I'm your king. And they said, but... <coughs> We want a fine palace and a throne and a human. And God said, okay. Have it your way. And so they had Saul. Saul was an idiot. Saul lost a whole herd of donkeys. How do you lose a herd of donkeys? You know, one or two straying off? Yeah. But if your job is to watch the herd, how do you lose it? But Saul managed. David, pretty good guy. Pretty good along the, the straight and narrow. But there was that whole Bathsheba thing. Bathsheba. It wasn't just the lust. It wasn't just the adultery. It was the murder that God or that David committed to legitimize his adultery. God said, how's that working out for you? Solomon, great at the beginning, bad at the end. And God said, how's that working out for you? That led to a division in the kingdom, which led to people abandoning God. Finally, for the southern kingdom, when they were taken into captivity in Babylonia, God eventually asked, how's this all working out for you? Do you think maybe that earthly king wasn't the answer?
A lot of times we think we know better than God. You know, it's, it's just like kids. Kids know better than the parents, especially when they turn into teenagers, right? But do they? The parents have been around the block a few times. They've seen things. And they know things. They understand things. Which, nothing against the kids, they just haven't been there. Our Heavenly Father has been around the block so many more times than we have. And He loves us and He cares about that, that we can we can trust 100% in that promise that God works everything together for the good of His people. Because of His compassion. Now, I like you guys. You know, I could probably even take the bold step and say, I love you guys. But if you said to me, well, the way you're going to have to prove that is you are going to have to sacrifice your son. I think we're going to have another discussion. But the discussion God had was, this is what it takes for you. This is what I will do. And we see this consistent compassion of God all through history. Even from the time right after Adam and Eve ate the apple. Well, the fruit. We don't know if it's an apple or what. Personally, I think it's a coconut. But that's another story. But from the time Adam and Eve ate the fruit, all the way through, we see God's compassion for His people. His caring for that. He keeps drawing His people back to Him. Not saying, do this or else but by showing His compassion. Ultimately, in the death of His Son on the cross. And He says, all of this is what I have for you. All of this is for you. It's not about me. I'm not fickle. I'm giving you this. Time after time after time because... I care for you and it's what you need. Why do you think he, he gave to us the sacrament of the altar? Because he knows this is what we need. This is how we need to be fed. We need to be cleansed. We need to be strengthened. And this is what he does. He's steadfast. He's immovable. He's caring. He's watched over His creation from the beginning until now and will until the end of time because He wants what's best for you. And He brings that to us through Christ. No greater love than when someone lays down his life for another which is exactly what Christ did so that we're not chewed up and spit out by Satan by sin by our own sinful nature we're not consumed because of God's compassion because of his son because of what he accomplished on the cross because he brings that to us through His Word, through His sacraments, and provides us with exactly what we need so that we may always live in that peace that surpasses all understanding. And may that peace keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.